I'm going to show you how to do Gainsland's test, which is a sacroiliac joint pain provocation test. Laszlo et al. in 2005 found a sensitivity of 53% and a specificity of 71% for the right side and a sensitivity of 50% and a specificity of 77% for the left side. In 2020, Schneider et al. found a sensitivity of 29% and a specificity of 44%. This tells you in these two research papers that generally this test has poor clinical value. But like I've said in this series of videos on sacroiliac joint provocation tests, that if you use three or more tests in a cluster, it becomes more valuable to you as a clinician. This test is carried out with the patient lying supine on the edge of the couch. Hang the ipsilateral leg over the edge of the couch. This extends the hip and anteriorly rotates the inanimate bone. Flex the contralateral side at the hip and knee. Then apply a firm downward pressure to the ipsilateral knee and a counter pressure to the contralateral knee. This increases the shearing forces in the sacroiliac joint and provocation of the patient's pain is a positive test. This test can also be performed with the patient lying on their side. And this can be useful if they cannot lie on their back because of acute back pain. This test should never be performed with somebody with a prosthetic hip. These results tell us that the Gainsland's test used in isolation is unreliable. But my advice to you is never to use one of these tests in isolation, but use them as part of a cluster and aim to get a positive result in at least three or four sacroiliac joint provocation tests. If you do this, you'll find that your results will be more reliable and your treatment will be more effective. So this was our second video on sacroiliac joint pain provocation tests. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more material like this. Thank you for watching.